Hey there, welcome to Drew Bentley Guitar. Today we're going to take a look at how to take power chords, basic power chords, and expand upon it to make your jams and your writing more interesting and more elaborate. Let's take a look. So one of my students recently asked me, what do I do if I'm playing power chords and I want to do something more interesting when I'm either jamming or I'm writing music or writing parts? So let's do a video about that. We're going to start with the basic power chords first. We're going to add layers of things to it and see how interesting we can make it. Let's have some fun. So I start with this E5 first, this Metallica type power chord. Go to this C next, which is an A form. E form of G, A form of D. And the same thing again. But end with an A instead, so it's call and response, question and answer. So the first thing that comes to mind is doing different versions of these. Let's do the E up here instead. So do the E here first, the C here. D here, D here. And I did the A and the D form. So these are all caged uh, power chord forms. You should learn these. So now I have some different variations going on. The next thing that comes to mind is, let's try some different techniques. Let's do some articulation and some different chugging patterns. For articulation, I could do this. I'm going to add more strings to it and do this complete D form of this E power chord like this. So now it sounds more interesting. I did throw in this C form of the D chord, just kind of organically. We'll get to that in a minute. But you see I'm articulating, I'm making things a little more interesting, changing the, the dynamic of things. These are good for like inner parts when you're not playing just the basic chuggity chug stuff. As far as chugging goes, we can do different patterns of chugs as well. So like the T-tippy is a gallop, it's like an iron beat. You can also do tippy tees, more like metal. So different chugging patterns make it different as well. And interesting because you're in variations of different things you're doing. Now I will mention if you play just the power chord, that's cool. As soon as I get beyond this, these three strings, I'm now playing full caged forms. And sometimes that sounds really good, and sometimes it doesn't. Certain songs work a lot better if it's just power chords. Other songs work better if you incorporate all of the strings. Speaking of that, that's the next layer. We're going to do caged forms. So what are the caged forms? Um, take a look at the cage system if you don't know it already. But for like this A form, the actual chord is like all of these strings, right? This E form includes all of those strings, same thing with the D. So I can kind of do some caged stuff and really spread things out. You'll hear that all the time in Van Halen rhythms and stuff like that. So do these two strings here. For example, that's part of this. So we do this for the E. Keep the C the same. Let's do these two strings for my E chord looks like an F, right? And here's the C form of D I just touched upon a minute ago before. The whole form is like this. Just those three strings alone. Now my riff is this. So it's already more interesting. If I go up here now, my C up here like this. This is a E form of C up here, G form of D, and then the A form of, uh, sorry, the uh, C form of G, and then the A form of D. So I get this. We 
really important to learn your caged uh, system if you don't know this already. Not just for the power cords, but you can see for opening things up to know all these different forms, especially in smaller string groupings. There's tons of videos on this channel to, to learn that. Just go to the cage playlist and you can get uh, caught up with all of that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add add nine, six and sus notes to these caged forms to create some moving lines through the chords. Sounds like this. Here's my E I started with. You see, I'm going to add this sus right here. And this is like your standard sus that you hear all the time in rock songs. Next thing, I'm going to add my little finger to G5 on the same little G chord we did there. That's the suspension on the G. On the C form, I'm going to add my same little finger bow on the fourth right this time, and that's the sixth of D. So this sounds like this. Creating some melody. Add the sus up there, the C, add the sixth to the top of that chord. For this, I'm going to add that uh, sixth of the G chord there, and then the sus of the D sounds like this. Throw a little different trill in there too. That's that technique I was talking about, adding some techniques into it, mix and match the stuff. Kind of the sky's the limit, but you can see that a lot of the guitar hooks that you probably love are doing this type of thing. The next thing I'm going to do is add some moving lines, but on the bottoms of the chords instead. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this from the A form. Do that to it. And the same thing on the G. Here's D, I'll do the same thing here for D. Basically, I'm just moving the major scale through the chords, but the point is that I'm moving lines now on the bottom of the chords also. You do that down here also with inversions. I do this, bottom of this uh, first G to E like this. Get that dotted and all from here. So all these cage inversions really matter. Now the next layer is we're going to throw some riffs in too. This is like a Randy Rhodes type thing. He would always do stuff like this. I'll do it slowly. I did E and the D form, then this A, and then it went like this. Simply a major uh, seventh chord through C. This open string riff, which is a very popular uh, guitar riff. So I'm throwing some riffs in too. Another cool riff would be to go like a major pentatonic on the D, that'd be like this. So these are all very popular things to do to continue to add layers to this. The next layer we're going to do is we're going to throw some open strings in as well. So open strings are interesting. They have a different relationship to each chord depending on where you are on the fretboard. I call this uncaged. It's the caged system, but we're not actually caging it, if that makes sense. We're leaving the strings open to ring out. So for E, I could do this. If the top two strings are open. There's C down here, so I can do something like this. Right? And then for the G, I'll leave the top two strings open as well. And the same thing for D, so I get this. So 
between a C and a G and A. So I'm just giving some examples of open strings. You can have open strings in the middle of the chord too. A C can leave the G string open. Do this. So now I have something like this. That sounds kind of cool, right? I can do E up here. Minor with the G string open. So that entire thing with a variation of different open strings kind of ringing out through all of it. That sounds really cool too. And you, again, it's a variation of this thing. Now the next layer we're going to do is we're going to throw some octaves in as well. So you hear this a lot too, but I do like a... So there's another available thing to do. That's a lot of layers, right? These are all variations of the same basic power chord riff we started with. It gets better and better and better as we add stuff. Then the last layer I'm going to talk about today is throw some kind of soloing things in as well while you're doing this kind of hodgepodge mix and match of all this stuff. If I do this, maybe I'll do a little solo for the next two uh, measures. So you can do soloing in there as well. You don't have to just stick with the chords. You can throw some riffs in too. Kind of down there as well. So I'm going to go through all these again, very slowly through each one of these layers that you can add to this power chord jam to make it better and better and better. And if you apply this to your writing, the, the sky's the limit for the amount of riffs you can come up with. It's literally endless. Starting with power chords first. Add some techniques in. During the uh, way we're going to chug it, do like a different kind of chugging. Next thing I talked about was doing some different caged inversions. And I started throwing some add nine six and sus stuff into it. Next thing I did was add lower notes to the cage system. Then I started throwing in some, uh, let's see what's next here. Open strings. So next thing I threw in was some riffs. I think the riffs came before the open strings. You get the idea. 
just another layer to add to it. Octaves. And some solos. So you get the idea, it's really the sky's the limit. There's so much we can do with this. So I hope that's a lot of fun for you to take your basic power course and just elaborate on it and grow with it and see what you come up with. All right, thanks so much for checking out the video and I'll catch you at the next one.